What is in the air? The air that we breathe, is it empty? When you look at the sky on a clear day, it seems pretty empty. You may see some cloud or fog perhaps, but apart from that, New Zealand has some of the clearest skies you can find. But sometimes you may notice a little bit of haze in the distance, and if you're looking at the right place at the right time, the clear air near the ground can be replaced by a choking blanket of smoke. The smoke in this picture is wood smoke from fireplaces in people's homes. Sometimes the air is so full of stuff that it changes colour and makes it hard to see. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge with the air full of smoke from bushfires outside the city. Australian bushfire smoke has been known to cross the Tasman Sea and turn the skies over New Zealand orangey-pink. To find out what's in the air, scientists collect air samples on filters and to put them into powerful microscopes like this one. But what do they see? They see that the air is full of particles, microscopic bits of stuff that is mostly too small to be seen by the eye, but small enough to float around in the air for hours, days, even weeks, and small enough to be inhaled into our lungs. When we look closer, we see that particles come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes, depending on where they come from. For example, these sharp, ragged particles, for example, are volcanic ash from volcanoes. These cubes of crystals are sea salt. Every time a wave breaks or a bubble on the ocean surface pops, droplets of seawater are flung into the air and carried on the wind. Gradually, the water evaporates, leaving behind a tiny crystal of salt. There is lots of salt in the air near the coast, but rather less inland. These particles are like tiny balls or blobs that stick together to form chains or clusters like a floss. This is sooty smoke. It's made mostly from carbon and it comes from burning fuels like wood, coal, oil or waxes. It also comes from deliberate fires such as burning woody debris on orchards or controlled bushfires or from accidental fires. This is what the orange smoke from the Australian bushfires was largely made of. These particles are pollen grains. Some pollen is just about large enough to see with the naked eye, but there are lots of different types of pollen associated with different types of grasses, trees, and other plants which are released at different times of the year. The amount in your air depends on what grows nearby. This cauliflower-like object is a mold spore. Mold thrives where it is damp and the air is undisturbed. These images do not show steam. Steam is an invisible gas the form that water takes if it is over 100 degrees. This is water vapour, tiny droplets of water suspended in the air. If they are warm enough, they shrink and seem to disappear, but the water is still there, ready to recondense into visible droplets if it gets cool enough. There is water vapour in the air everywhere, all the time, whether you can see it or not. Microscopic balls like this are often made of metal. Metal balls are often released accidentally by machines with metal parts that rub together and wear away, like car brakes, or processes that heat metal and cause tiny bits to melt. Think of sparks. The air can also contain things that are, or were, living, like bacteria, but also viruses. But for many of us, the particles we inhale the most of are the very smallest ones. We call them ultrafine or nanoparticles. They can measure only a few millionths of a millimetre in size. They come mostly from traffic exhaust, but can also come from burning fuels like gas and oil. So, were you paying attention? Why not try our quiz on the website? And have you gone hunting for moats?